Hello and welcome to design vlog number two. In this video we're going to be talking about the math and physics behind the do-it-yourself hydraulic system and we're going to be going into some of my future project plans using this do-it-yourself hydraulic system. We're also going to take a look at the results of trying a new type of piston seal and a new hydraulic fluid inside the hydraulic chamber. So without further ado, let's get started. So I said I was going to talk about the math behind this and here we go. This is a diagram which I've created to mostly explain this, pro this principle to myself. However, I think that it might be useful for you. I can point out a few things and try to make it as comprehensible as possible. So, what we're dealing with is hydraulic principles. We're dealing with things that involve pressure and volume displacement. So we're going to be applying pressure to the hydraulic fluid. In our case, we've been using water. And that hydraulic fluid is going to move and apply pressure on another object. If you know anything about pressure, pressure is a force over an area. Something that's pressurized applies force to everything that it touches. If you have water in a cylinder and you have a piston that's pressurizing it, then the, wall, the, the fluid applies pressure to every single bit around it. The, thing, the, the area that we're looking for, the area that matters, is the area of the piston head. How wide is the piston and how, how, much, how much area does it cover? Because pressure is equal to force divided by area, if you apply a force on a smaller area piston, you create a larger amount of pressure. Essentially, you're working with a ratio of areas that is going to allow us to transfer the amount of force we have and, and amplify it in some way. So essentially, you might move this 12 inches, but only get an inch of movement here. You're, you're sacrificing the linear movement of the piston for a greater amount of force. It's a trade-off that we're willing to use when we want to make something user-friendly. So in this diagram, I started looking at the design of a standing desk. I want to create something that you basically, you basically apply force to this arm here, and the arm will move and lift up your computer. I thought that this would be great because I sit on the computer all day and I wanted a, a, an ability to stand up while I work. So when you lift up a computer, you're lifting maybe 20 pounds. So if you're going to lift 20 pounds with a lever, then you need to lift that lever a certain distance and you need to apply a certain amount of force on that lever. lever. And the amount of force that you're going to apply and the amount of distance is based on the the place that you are applying that force on the lever. So I discovered that I wanted to lift my computer up about a foot. If I want to lift my computer up about a foot, then I need to know where should I apply that force in the most optimal way for space saving purposes to get this cylinder risen, to get this, this, this computer risen. I want to apply that force very close to the pivot point of the lever. So because I'm applying that force so close to the pivot point of the lever, if you know anything about torque, you know that if you apply a force at only a small, a small distance away from the, the pivot point, then you're not getting a very good mechanical advantage here. So I discovered if I wanted to lift up a 20 pound load at the distance I need to, at the distance that I want to from it, then I need well over 100 pound force. I wouldn't be able to do this if I didn't have the area difference that I have in my three quarter inch piston and my three inch piston. In order to do that, I needed to come up with a different way of creating a piston that was cost effective and easy to do. So this, I couldn't use, I can't use things like syringes. Syringes are the common do it yourself tool for this. You can basically take a half inch diameter syringe and use an inch diameter syringe and you can get some level of mechanical advantage when you apply pressure on that smaller system and you get and you transfer it to a larger one. 
this wouldn't work for me because I need such a large force and I want it to be so user friendly. I really want to, I want to limit the amount of force that you need to apply as a user to about five pounds. If I want to limit my force to only five pounds, then we're going to have some serious difficulties when we want to use a, a system like this, because if we want to lift over a hundred pounds with this, it's not going to work out. We're going to have to use over 30, 40 pounds of force on that little, uh, on that little piston. So I also wanted to go through some of the math I've done on this. Uh, it might get you a better idea of some of the numbers and ratios that I'm, I'm really dealing with here. Uh, so this is a program that I use often called Mathematica. It's a really good mathematical notebook and in a programming language. Uh, I really enjoy it. Using it, I think it's a very powerful thing. Um, potentially, um, I might even start a YouTube channel to show some of the useful things I've been able to make with this. But this is, uh, so, okay, let's go over this. So I'm asking myself a few questions. So how much pressure would I get from a five pound force on a half inch diameter piston? How much force would that translate to if that pressure created was applied to a two inch diameter piston? How far would it push the two inch diameter piston? So I'm answering these questions by use of pressure equations um, and, and, and volume and, and things like that. And uh, I'm interested in knowing, okay, so I set, I'm gonna apply a hydraulic force of five inches and I'm not using the same uh, dimensions that I asked in this question. I'm, I, I'm using a, my, my smaller diameter piston is a three quarter inch diameter. My larger diameter piston is a three inch. I'm gonna move the, the smaller diameter piston 36 inches, three feet. And uh, these other variables will come into use later. Um, I'm, I'm, so I'm gonna go through this, these, these formulas. So pressure is equal to my hydraulic force over the area of the smaller diameter piston. So pi times the three quarter inch diameter. And I get that I'm gonna create an 11 PSI pressure from putting five pounds of force on it. The hydraulic force that I get on the other side when the water is traveled over is 80 pounds. This is the area of the larger diameter piston times the pressure that I've created. This is pretty awesome. I'm getting, let's see, 16 times increase in pressure from just five pounds. I'm getting 80 pounds on the other side. So I'm gonna, this is, uh, this is not the entire amount of force I'm gonna need for my system, but of course, this is, uh, this is not the maximum amount of force you can apply. This is just an example. I'm getting 16 times the amount of force. And that is because of the uh, ratio of diameters. Um, there's also, I also talked about a, a, a differently a, a trade-off in the amount of distance that you're going to get. Um, so I move, I, I told you I was going to move that three quarter inch diameter piston 36 inches, three feet on the other side. Because of the volume that you move is small because it's a small diameter. The length that the other piston moves is only two and a quarter inches. So something I found out today was that I'm getting a lot of wear on my pistons. When I slide them up and down inside the cylinder, because I'm using water, I believe, I'm getting a lot of wear and that's making it so that even though I create the pistons, at a larger diameter than the cylinder, they're still gonna wear off and start leaking. So I created a new piston seal uh, and new piston system. So this piston system will go and replace my new, uh, my older piston system and go into my, my new hydraulic system. So another thing I'm gonna do to fix that problem is I'm going to change my hydraulic fluid. Uh, I'm going to use a cooking oil, canola oil. Uh, it might be something you have around your kitchen. Um, I think that it's a, high, it's a highly viscous oil. Uh, it's, it's probably going to do the job for me. I need it to lubricate the inside 
as I slide the piston up and down. And as well, I think the higher viscosity will help me prevent that a blowback, will help me prevent hydraulic fluid coming out and leaking. So let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm going to fill up my cylinder with oil and then we'll be ready. So I will show you what happens before I talk about it. It's, it's not a good thing. Here's my smaller diameter piston. If you remember with the water, the force I had to apply to move my larger piston was almost nothing. So you can see it is moving, but something is horribly wrong here. I think that the oil is too viscous. I think that the oil is either clogging up my lines or potentially flowing through. It's definitely flowing through this system. I'm getting a lot of oil coming through. Um, it's also a mess. I mean, yeah. Overall, I'm pretty glad that this isn't working. Um, I don't want to too far, but there's oil in there. We'll try again another day. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> Stay tuned tomorrow for a discussion on the molding process for our hot glue. That still works. Don't use oil. Bye. <laughs> More information is offered on my website, thedoityourselfresource.com. As well, feel free to like our Facebook page and watch us live on twitch.tv. Links are in the description. Thank you very much and goodbye.